so this is going to show you the difference between the traditional constraints and driving a transform via the offset parent matrix. So I'm going to show what would traditionally be a parent constraint implemented with the offset parent matrix. So on the left side, you see an axis that I'm going to use to drive this cube using traditional constraints. And on the right side, you see I'm going to use this axis to drive this cube using an offset parent matrix. I'll show you right now. There's no connection between them. You'll see that this guy is not affecting him. And you'll see that this guy is not affecting him. So to first set up the traditional method, uh, we would typically select the, the object that we want to follow first and then the object that's going to follow it. Come to the constraint menu. I'll go to parent. I'm going to reset the settings to make sure everything's at default. I'm going to apply that. And now we have a, a, relation, a parent child relationship. Uh, I'm also going to add a scale constraint because even though it's called a parent constraint, it only solves for translation and rotation. So we also want to solve for scale. So now when I grab this guy and I scale him, we get a parent-child relationship for scale as well. So I'll undo those two changes. All right, now on the right here, we have this guy, which is not currently affecting the cube, but we want him to. So we're gonna use the offset parent constraint. So we'll clear this. I will bring these two guys in here and let's get rid of these extra nodes. And we'll see we have an axis and we want to drive a cube with it. So I'm going to take the world matrix of this axis and I'm going to connect it up to the offset parent matrix of the cube. So now what you'll see is as I grab this guy, we have the ability to move him around and he follows him and he also picks up scale just like the other one. Now what's interesting is this one we've individually solved for translation, rotation and scale. But if we look here, if we apply shear, it doesn't do anything for shear. So that's problematic. But this one, if we grab shear, you'll see that the shear is inherited. So this carries through a full transformation matrix. Now we can take a look in the node editor at what this looks like from a connection standpoint. So you already saw the new connection is set up this way, where we have a single connection that drives the world matrix into the offset parent matrix. If we go to the, the old system, what we see, if I grab these two guys and we pop the node editor open and I throw this in here, if I graph this, what you will see is you see an axis, you see the RGB cube. I'm gonna go ahead and remove uh, these nodes from the graph so they don't clutter things up. You will see the scale constraint and you'll see the parent constraint. Now, if I expand this parent constraint out, you see exactly how many connections that are being managed here. And this isn't all the connections. If you look, this is not a single connection. If you expand that out, there's three translation connections. There's three rotate connections. There's three scale connections. So some of these connections are actually multiple connections that have been collapsed together. So as you can tell, this is not a very ideal way to manage all of this. This is not something you would do by hand. So typically if somebody messes up with a, a constraint system, they're gonna blow this constraint away and reconnect it. They're not gonna go try to rewire this uh, because this is a huge mess that you don't wanna deal with. So quick recap, this is fewer nodes. It doesn't have the extra constraint nodes. It's fewer connections and it supports more features than the other as well as operating more quickly. Something else that I would show you here is the connections. So if we look at how this guy is being driven through traditional constraints, as you noticed in the node editor, these connections are feeding into individual translation, rotation, and scale values, which means we've now occupied these values, so they're not available for animation. I can come in here, and if you look in the channel box, you'll see they're all connected here. And as I manipulate these, it'll populate them, but you'll also notice when I grab this guy and move him, it pops back. It starts stomping on those, those values. Now, you can get those values to persist by bringing him to where he is and then keying him. So if we key that selected object, now you'll notice that this doesn't populate that anymore. But in order to pull this off, you'll see that what it did is it added this pair blend node and it added animation curves and now the values from the parent constraint that deal with translation and rotation have been driven into this pair blend node and the pair blend node is set to 
a value of zero. So it only uses the curves and is ignoring these. And you can scrub back and forth, but ultimately that just adds more connections and confusion to the graph. Uh, if uh, we look at the new system, what you'll notice in the node editor is that we only have one connection going in. If I select him, you'll notice in the channel box, these values are not hooked up. These are available to animate. You'll see that these are all open. There's no connections coming into these. So if we come back here, if we want to move him around, if we, if we want this guy to move around as a child, we can still move him and his values are populated. If we come over here and move him, he's still acting like a child of, of this controller. Whereas this one, if you remember, he started to lose his translation connection, right? It's, it's using the translation values that we baked. Whereas this one is still gonna inherit those translation values. The other nice thing about this is when we want him to go back to rest, we can just come back here and we can zero these values out. And he returns to his rest position relative to this matrix. Whereas this one, the values always remain populated. Zeroing him out will send him to some arbitrary point in space that has nothing to do with, with this position. All right, thank you.